Uh, hello, this is my uh, Technical Material Corp TCM GPR90 receiver that I'm selling. Uh, it's, as you can see in the picture and the some still shots I have a, included also with this uh, ad. It's extremely clean. The front panel has uh, no rust, no marks, no wear patterns, and it's in really excellent shape. The overall cabinet is in really great shape. The receiver works well from uh, broadcast band all the way up through 10 meters. Currently, uh, this is on 10 meters, We're copying uh, a one microvolt signal, which a lot of receivers this age don't come close to copying. And that's being supplied by my uh, HP signal generator, which is right here. And you can see it's on the one microvolt scale. And the meter is up there at uh, one microvolt. So that's the signal level that we're feeding into the receiver. And obviously we've stepped it up now a bunch so you can hear it sounds very well. The audio is not distorted. There's really uh, no issues with this uh, at all. I'd say the only blemish of any consequence is a little scratch in the lower lip of the, the front cabinet which could be easily uh, touched up by somebody with a little bit of uh, gray paint or something, a little artist brush, but other than that there's no scrapes or gouges or rust over the top of the cabinet. Everything is uh, very nice. Doesn't have any evidence of equipment's having sat on or done any damage or anything like that. I'm going to switch bands. We'll go down to a lower band and just show you that it works fine on the lower bands also. Not just uh, 10 meters, but usually 10 meters for these older receivers is the, uh, more or less the worst case. So we're going to swap bands now and we'll be right back. Okay, we're tuned up now on 20 meters with the uh, GPR90. Again, we're listening to a uh, one microvolt uh, signal. It's doing well on 20 also. Fully copyable. And uh, I'd like to show you the calibrator operation and a little bit uh, check of the dial linearity. So right now we're at 14.2. I'll turn off the signal generator. And Turn on the calibrator and the BFO. Now you can see the dial is right on 14.2. Uh, I'll zoom in so maybe we can get a better shot of that. Okay, so we're 14.2. You can see the BFO works fine. And slide down to. 14.1, and we'll see we're just almost right on the nose at 14.1. Let's we'll see how it is up at 14.3. And we're pretty close on 14.3, maybe a few kilohertz high on dial uh, accuracy, which for, again, for these receivers uh, are said, really excellent. You feel good all over kind of yeah. massage. Well, listening now on uh, 20 meters, I just had no AM on 20 today, so just uh, listening to some single sideband uh, conversations. Uh, right and, uh, you know, it does pretty good on uh, SSB. Yeah. Uh, fine tune the BFO and, uh, uh, and vary the RF gain control to control your volume and leave the audio gain pretty much all the way up. Uh, I have also said to him that he should sell uh, T-shirts. It's a normal mode for uh, these older receivers on uh, on single sideband or CW for that fact. But uh, you know, it works pretty good up here also in the uh, SSB mode. Uh, I'm gonna go and see if I can find some AM someplace. 
Welcome to this edition of Time Studio. Okay, we're now uh, listening at 40 meters. There's nobody on AM here yet on 40 or 75. Uh, this 5 o'clock local time here. But we have uh, the Chinese broadcast, which is on 40 meters, just uh, uh, about 72, uh, 85 or so. And of course, they're coming in pretty good. We have a little numbness when we're trying to work on... Uh, 72.95, but uh, they're here coming in uh, loud and clear in this. Various other broadcasts uh, coming in on uh, 40 meters today. A little late in the day, probably. They come in and, you know, we all hate them. So uh, we'll go see if we can find some uh, amateur AM. Okay, now we're listening to the AM broadcast band for anybody that might be looking to use this receiver. It's a little uh, broadcast band uh, DX listening. Actually, it's the lower, the lowest scale on the on the dial there. Right now, we're listening to uh, 810 GY, which is a, a strong local station. Fully understand the harp guidelines. It's 900. It's a 1940s oldies station. He's only a one kilowatt station, so. Yeah. It'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 points. That's uh, 980 AM. It's a local uh, sports radio station, but you can see the dials, uh, dial accuracy is right on. And it works real nice on AM. No shortage of stations on there. I don't have a uh, broadcast band antenna on here, so right now I'm using a 40 meter dipole, but it's still working fine. And uh, it's good on that broadcast band. So, you know, the push button switching is on. That's the uh, GPR uh, 90 on 75 meter AM. We have a QSO in process with uh, uh, Timmy and somebody else coming in fairly well. You know, for the shack uh, receiver audio. Let's look at this piece of crap. It's an old black techniques. You know, it's like a 20 watt per channel amplifier. It's a USB. It's about a 30 over 9 receiver. And it's just, you know, it's just a real piece nice. of garbage. It's okay, but uh, looking forward to getting the SQ80 back up there. And then plus the SQ80 is pretty sharp looking piece of equipment, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with that Dynaco anode, the brushed uh, or anodized aluminum front panel and sort of the gold anodized and yeah, it's just a good looking piece of equipment. WA1HOR, WA1IWQ. Okay, WA1IWQ. This is WA1HOR. Is that the one Okay, now we're on uh, 10 meters and just showing the uh, uniformity over the bands uh, for S9 e equaling approximately 50 microvolts. So we're on 10 meters, 29 megacycles, showing S9. And we're on the 100 microvolt range. And dial back to 50 microvolts uh, output. And we'll jump down now to 20 meters and then down to like 160. Okay, now we're on uh, 20 meters, 14.2, reading just a few dB over S9. The same uh, attenuator, coarse attenuation, and frequency of 14.2, and showing about. Uh, 48 microvolts. Okay, now we're uh, on 160, tuning up at uh, 1.9, showing S9 plus 10. A little more gain down at the lower frequencies as you might expect in uh, pretty much any receiver. And the company up here to the generator. 1.9. 1 Attenuator still at the uh, 100 microvolt range, and the variable attenuator set at. Uh, we have it coming to focus here. 
50 uh, microvolts. Yeah, what I'd like to show now is the uh, fact that the uh, crystal filter uh, null adjustment works, phasing control, just like it's supposed to. Right now, looking at a uh, S9 signal uh, on 1.9 megacycles, and we'll rotate the phasing control. You can see the signal all but disappears when it's completely nulled out. And then we'll come back up again. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do to be able to possibly eliminate adjacent uh, signals that may be causing a heterodyne. Works very well. Yeah, what I'd like to show now is how the uh, crystal filter works to eliminate uh, one sideband of uh, a CW signal, if you're listening, or possibly even a single sideband signal. So right now, uh, we're tuned in at one point uh, nine megacycles again. You can clearly hear both sides of the BFO are present. So now we'll uh, offset the BFO a little bit, put the filter in service. Now you can hear the other side band is practically nothing. A uh, slight tweak of the phasing control, we can eliminate it even further. So that's the desired sideband. The other sideband is way down. And if we go down to 250 cycle, it's even more pronounced. It's way down. And if we fine-tune the crystal phasing control, you can see it works uh, pretty well.